Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman. I got in the Legion Go 2 the other day. I'm going to be doing a review on it. But before I do that, I wanted to test out its capabilities for connecting up external GPUs. The Legion Go 2 has two USB 4 ports on board, which are Thunderbolt compatible. So this should be possible even if we need to connect power up separately. And to test this, what I've got today is this GM KTEC GPU that I reviewed not too long ago. This is their AD GP1. It sells for just under $500, depending on where you're looking and when. And what it's got under the hood is an AMD RX 7600 MXT with eight gigabytes of video memory. That, of course, is more powerful than the internal GPU on the Z2 Extreme chip that the handheld here has. And what this can also do is not only power itself, but also power the handheld here with a single cable. So theoretically, all I have to do is connect up this cable. It should be able to power our handheld and deliver all of the GPU performance to the external display here. So I'm curious to see if this is going to work. And that is what we're going to test out in this video. And I'll have a review of this at a later time. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that the handheld here is on loan from Lenovo. So when I'm done with it, it goes back to them. The GPU here was provided free of charge by GMK Tech a little while back, but neither company is reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. No other compensation was received and all opinions are my own. So let's get into it now and see how an external GPU might work on this handheld PC. Now, the way eGPUs work is that you have to connect your monitor to the external GPU for the best performance and then disable the internal display. The only thing missing from this external GPU are USB ports if you wanted to connect up networking and other things. So we might have to make use of that bottom port for that. I would have liked to have had both of the USB-C ports on the top of the Legion Go 2. That's what they've just done on their lower end model called the Legion Go S. They have two USB 4 ports right next to each other, which I think would have been a little bit better for docking. Although what we could do is just set this down flat and there should be enough room for cooling uh, to be able to get that done, provided we keep the controllers attached to it. So why don't we connect this up here to the top uh, portion of the unit here, to the top uh, plug. And what should happen here is we should start getting a charge, which we are getting. And now we have to let Windows detect everything. Now, this is running with AMD drivers for its Z2 processor. I don't know if we're going to have to install some additional drivers for the external GPU, but we'll definitely test that out. And it looks like this might have to sit and think about it for a minute here because my display is not coming up yet. So let me let this uh, think about its uh, life here for a few minutes and we'll come back if I'm able to get the display to turn on. All right, so it looks like we are getting the display going here. It did detect the display after a couple of minutes, but it did not have drivers installed for the external GPU. So right now I am installing those drivers. I'm most curious to see what will happen after I disconnect this and whether we'll have any kind of driver collisions because of course this is AMD based as is the Z2 Extreme processor inside of the Legion Go 2 here. So I'm going to let this finish installing. One thing I don't think will work in this environment is a hot swap. In other words, if I was playing a game on the internal GPU, coming home to the external one will likely require me to quit the game and reload it so we can switch over to the other graphics. So it won't be as smooth as just plugging your unit in if you wanted to have a seamless transition, but you will get a lot more performance when you do dock it to the GPU. So let me let this finish doing its thing, and when it's done, we'll see what happens. All right, so the drivers are installed and everything has been detected properly. I'm just going to move this out of the way a little bit so I can actually see my screen. And when we look over here on the hardware section of the AMD drivers, you can see that our second GPU is now recognized. We've got, we got 8 gigs of video RAM available, so it looks like everything is up and running here. I think what I'd like to start with is a few benchmarks. And before we do that, we have to take one more step, which is to disable the internal display here when everything is connected. And the reason why is that you don't get the full performance out of your eGPU unless the internal display is turned off because you don't want to pipe the video through here because there is a bandwidth limitation to the USB 4 slash Thunderbolt bus here. So what we're going to do is rather than extend the display, show only on two. So when I do that here, it's going to turn off the internal display 
and anytime I come in and plug in, it will light up the second display. And if I unplug this, of course, we'll go back to the other GPU. Let's test that real quick. Uh, and we should be able to use the system as we were before. So there we go. We've got everything back up and running here. And it also notified me that my graphics were disconnected. So that's good. So it looks like it's able to get on the right GPU. And what if we plug it back in again? Let's see what happens here. We'll reattach the cable. I'm getting power again. And we'll give it a second here to detect everything. And now what should happen is the internal display should shut off. And now the external display should light up here. And it did come up on my video capture. And now we've got it going here. And it looks like it has been connected again. So there is the ability at least to hot swap on the desktop side. Again, for games, I think we're going to have to exit the game and go back in. So let me load up my 3D Mark benchmarks now. Let's run a few of those, see how it compares to the internal hardware, and then we'll play a game or two. So we've got the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark test running here. This is something I like to run on all of the systems that I test here so we can compare one to the other. It's certainly running a lot better than it does natively, and that's again because we've got the external GPU attached. I'm drawing about 215 watts right now according to my kilowatt. And that is what the GPU is consuming plus what the system needs to operate here. I think the total power budget of this device is about 240 watts. So we do have some room here, uh, which is good to see. So yeah, we're definitely getting the performance that I was expected. We'll wait for the final number to come out here and we'll compare everything. But so far, so good. It looks like we are getting what we should be getting out of this configuration. I'll be right back with the results when we got them. All right, so we got our result here, 9,493. I'll pull my chart up here so you can see how it compares. So natively, the Legion Go will do about 3,999, and you can see the difference in frame rate there as well. So definitely a big performance boost, of course, as expected when you dock it. And again, what I like about this current scenario is that I can dock with a single cable and of course, we could detach the controllers and use them for a game. So why don't we try that real quick? I'm going to boot up my favorite game, No Man's Sky. We'll get it set to a nice 4K resolution here and see how it performs. And then I'll pull the cable and see what happens. I don't think it'll keep going after that, but who knows? Let's take a look. All right, so I've got No Man's Sky running here. We are at 4K with the enhanced settings. I'll pull up the menu here so you can see what I've got configured at the moment. And it is running okay here. This is pushing the hardware just a little bit. I'm not able to sustain a consistent 60 frames per second. I'm seeing some frame drops here and there. I like this game for testing because it is so variable in its performance given the procedural generation that goes on there. But it is playable. We're seeing 60 frames per second most of the time. I think sometimes, too, the caching has to catch up here as well. So it'll probably smooth out. Uh, but nonetheless, this is what we're able to do. The native hardware, of course, would not be able to generate this level of performance when directly connected to a display. So now let's do something a little crazy uh, because as you can see, I've got the controllers detached here and we're just running with the uh, system here perched up on its little stand. I'm gonna pull the cable. I don't know what's gonna happen here, but let's see. Um, so now we've detached the cable and it should switch over here. Uh, but now of course I get a crash which says that No Man's Sky has encountered an error because the GPU was disconnected. So uh, the, the hot swapping of the games here is not something that I'm going to recommend. But if you wanted more performance out of this thing, an extra 500 bucks when you get home for docking for better graphical performance will get you there uh, with this configuration. The only other thing to keep in mind is that you probably will have to adjust settings every time you go back and forth. I'm not sure that's something that's going to get detected automatically within Steam, for example. So there are a couple of things that you'll have to do to get this configuration working properly. And of course, as far as external GPUs are concerned, you're not limited to something like this. You can buy yourself a, a Thunderbolt enclosure and put a GPU of your choice in there and hook it up. But some of these enclosures can get a little large and cumbersome because they are designed to take a full desktop GPU. This is one I looked at recently from GT Box. I've got a 4060 attached to the top of it here. It works fine, but it just looks a little wacky. Uh, there are some others that are more of a proper enclosure where you've got a nice metal case for it, but they are all very large, which is why I really like this GMK Tech one because it is not uh, that big. It is relatively portable, and I think it looks a little nicer on a desk than some other monstrosity might. There is a power supply, of course, to deliver that 240 watts max power budget. Uh, this is what it looks like here, but you can put that on the floor and you're good to go. So I think for, you know, a basic docking solution, this works out really well. 
Uh, the only issue here with the uh, Legion Go 2 is that the other USB port is on the bottom. So if you did want to have a dock attached, for example, you're going to have to figure out a way to make this thing work in a way in which it's not sitting flat on the desk. Because when the stand is out, uh, you, of course, are covering up that USB port. So you'll probably need to get a stand or something and maybe a angled uh, connector to be able to make use of that because it can't sit flat. If you attach the controllers, that'll probably give you enough airflow to make it all work, but I would have liked to have both of the USB ports on the top here like their Legion Go S that uh, we looked at a little while ago. But still, it's kind of fun here to get an external GPU working with a handheld, and you know, it certainly is more costly than a desktop computer with similar performance. But if you're space constrained and you want your computer to be the same computer when you're home and when you're away, uh, this might not be a bad solution. So let me know what you thought down in the comments below. Also, let me know what you'd like to see out of my review of the Legion Go 2. I know a lot of folks have already reviewed it, and I wanted to maybe focus on some things that were missed in other reviews. So let me know down in the comments section, and we'll try to put something together in the next day or two. That will do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.